right, guys, welcome to the show, Fantasy Football Counselor. This is the Saturday DFS show. Going to be walking you through some optimal players at each position to help you guys with your DraftKings and FanDuel lineups, guys. I'm excited to dive into this. We're heading into Week 3 Fantasy Football. Now, go back and check the Week 3 Starts and Sits episode with me and the bald guy. Tim the bald guy, that is. Go check it out. It's really going to help you guys with your year-long. It's also going to help you with your year-long because you're going to know who the optimal players are at each position. Now, I do a Sunday morning last minute news and notes so there is a lot of injuries going on like jimmy garoppolo's out a lot of people questionable actually believe it or not josh jacobs is questionable with a hip as well so there's a lot of things going on in regards to injuries obviously george kittle suspect i think he's going to be ruled out uh players like that so you got to take a look at that and i talk about that in the Saturday morning, Sunday morning show, okay? Very important you guys tune into that, okay? Cam Akers has also been ruled out, which really sucks. It's going to give Daryl Henderson a chance to shine there, and I was a big Cam Akers guy. Listen, it happens. Injuries happen. It's been really taking a toll on a lot of players. I just saw a meme come out, actually. It had a picture of Andrew Luck on a swing, like, you know, those swings at the park, like the kid swings, and he's swinging, and it has everybody in the background burning in a fire. It's, it's actually pretty pretty funny that Andrew Luck avoided all of these injuries, kind of knowing that this was going to happen. It's kind of crazy. But, uh, but yeah, kind of feel bad for all the people that got injured, but it's funny how Andrew Luck saw this, you know, he foresaw this. Maybe Andrew Luck is a psychic. Who knows? But, uh, but yeah, it's been a crazy 2020 year, and I don't expect week three to be much different. I mean, there's going to be injuries as well. I just don't know who's going to go down. It's just like rolling the dice. You never know, right? <laughs> Who are you going to get? So always have depth. Always cover yourself in that year long, okay? But let's, start about some op- let's talk about some optimal players at each position here. And again, tune in Sunday morning. Make sure you guys smash thumbs up. Leave your starts and sits questions below here. And again, tune in Sunday morning for the last minute news and notes show early in the morning. All right, so let's talk about these uh, quarterbacks. Uh, Mitch Trubisky, good matchup versus Atlanta. Definitely a good value play. Now in DraftKings, he is going for $5,700. Now, again, when I look at any type of quarterback in my DraftKings or FanDuel lineup or any type of DFS lineup, I look at a guy that is going to perform and it's there's no guarantees but a guy that's been pretty consistent that's what I look for in any lineup so I don't necessarily look at value plays when it comes to quarterback position unless I know they're going to have a really good game Mitch Trubisky is suspect $7,500 on uh, FanDuel and like I said on DraftKings 5700 still value play Dak Prescott expensive at 7200 but really good matchup versus uh, Seattle this weekend listen Dak Prescott's been relatively good. Had a big game last week with 44 points. Worth considering as a, as a plug-in play this week. He's got great receivers, great options, coming off good momentum from last week. I'm looking for Dak Prescott to have a good week, okay? Uh, Baker Mayfield, $5,700, coming off a mediocre first couple weeks here. Listen, I'm not really sold on Baker Mayfield being a great quarterback. I think they had a, I'd say, I don't want to say lucky, but they had a, yeah, a couple easier games, I'd say, for the first couple weeks. And again, only coming up with around 16 points week one. That's not very good, okay? So be cautious there. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater's got an easy matchup. Kyler Murray has a good matchup against Detroit. Phillip Rivers has a good matchup against the Jets. Now, if you want a value play, this guy should succeed. Now, he had a mediocre week last week with 12 points. He's $6,000 on DraftKings. Phillip Rivers against the Jets. They literally have nobody. I mean, there's got to be something there. Or you can go with your safe guys. Now, Russell Wilson, amazing first couple weeks. Been looking like a superstar that he is. $7,300. Now, there's a difference between, if you look at a guy like Russell Wilson, $7,300. Or if you got want a guy like Phillip Rivers, who's at $6,000, that's a $1,300 difference. But... You're getting a guy that's almost certain to have a good game, Russell Wilson, right? Not as easy of his matchup as Phillip Rivers, you know, by a couple couple points. But Russell Wilson is a guy that has been solid, but you got to pay the price. And that's okay. In, in a lineup, I like to anchor my team with a solid quarterback. Now, there's a couple other solid quarterbacks I want to talk about that I want you to be cautious about if you do start them. Okay, Josh Allen and Matt Ryan. If you do want to start these guys, they do have tougher matchups. Matt Ryan, around third to fourth hardest matchup versus position against Chicago, and Josh Allen versus the Rams. Now, both these guys have a phenomenal two weeks to start. These are two quarterbacks that I own in year-long, and I'm kind of torn on who to start. Now, Josh Allen did get it going in the passing game a lot last week, 
But again, tough matchup. Also, Cam Newton, another guy. Ninth hardest matchup versus position. You want to be cautious with Cam Newton this week as well. It, it's a it's a good it's a tough matchup, but he's a good player, is what I'm trying to say here. It's a tough one. Now, again, with those three guys, if you have them in year long, I can't imagine sitting them, but in DFS, think about it, okay? Just just take a couple thoughts to, you know, just think about it. Now, Josh Allen, 6,900, Matt Ryan, 6,600. So they're not value, but they're not expensive, but they do have tough matchups. Something to consider when you are anchoring your team with that ace quarterback. Now, depending on what type of leagues you are. So I was playing uh, this week, uh, this past week on Thursday, I played the, the Flex 5 we flex five players, and then the top player gets 1.5 points. I was on it was on FanDuel, and I was playing it, and I actually had Ryan Fitzmagic in my top slot, which was he was like the second top performer next to Robinson. It was it was such a great week, and then I actually ended up winning 20 bucks. It was 17,000 people in the pool. I finished like 1,500, only won 20 bucks, but it shows you how much of a difference it makes if you have the right guy in that flex spot. If you are in those flex leagues. So you got to make sure, and you got to be like, you got everything's got to be perfect almost to to win the the major pot, right? To win the major, uh, the top prize, right? So it's tough. So sometimes I recommend maybe again always play within your budget, right? There's no guarantees in this stuff, but try to play multiple lineups if you can. So if you feel really good about a lineup, even if it's a salary based lineup, not just a five flex thing. You may want to consider doing multiple lineups saying, okay, I like this lineup, but maybe I'll switch this around or try this because sometimes it's just one player that makes a difference. Now, I've been winning almost in every one, but it's always, if you have 18, 20, 30, 100,000, 500,000 people in a pool, it's very likely that somebody else entering multiple times is going to get that maximized lineup, right? So I, I recommend doing a couple lineups and then Stick to the plan. Go with the optimal plays. And again, use that gut feeling, okay? Now, again, with a lot of injuries, for example, guys, we're going to get to wide receivers in a bit, is Julio Jones. He is questionable. He was more of a decoy last week, but Calvin Ridley was doing well. Now, you got to ask yourself, okay, if Julio sits out, is Calvin Ridley still going to perform because they don't have that decoy and that double coverage or whatever it is that's going to draw away? Can Calvin Ridley handle uh, you know, the targets, or will Russell Gage get more volume? Russell Gage would be a great value play this week. So you got to take a look at all of the variable scenarios and take a look at the situation. That's what I'm trying to clear up for you guys right here, right now in the most practical form. All right, running backs here. Austin Eckler, Joshua Kelly. Joshua Kelly, a great value at 5,000. I like him. He's been pretty consistent two weeks, putting up a safe 12 and 13 points. 13 points going in, in last week, right? So Joshua Kelly is going to be the goal line guy. I like him more than Eckler. He's a lot cheaper than Eckler, and I think he can outperform Eckler. And I love the matchup versus Carolina. Joshua Kelly should be able to run over these guys. I love this start this week, okay? Miles Sanders coming off a great week one, 21 points, and has a good uh, good matchup. So Miles Sanders is another guy you may want to consider in your DFS lineups. He is not cheap. He is $6,400. He is no value, but a guy that could probably get the volume. Now, here's a value play and a solid play, Kenyon Drake and Chase Edmonds. Now, I'm not sold on Kenyon Drake being a good player, so I'm not really sold on him. He could have a boom game. If he's going to have a boom game, it's against Detroit's rush defense, and it's going to be this week if he's going to go off. Now, Chase Edmonds is a value play, obviously not getting as much volume as Kenyon Drake, but a guy that I think would be a great value play that could go off if Kenny and Drake drops the ball or craps the bed, which I think he usually does, right? So Kenny and Drake actually came out on social media and said something along the line. I think it was something along the line of, you know, if you're not happy with me, trade me, gift me to somebody else. So I'll be a gift to somebody else. Basically saying that, I'm, I'm butchering the quote here, but what I'm saying is, he basically came out and said that if you get rid of me, somebody else will win. So again, I'm not sold on Kenny and Drake. Two weeks, nothing. Now here's a guy I really like here. Now he's not as you know, a good of a, um, a matchup against the other guys. He's got, got around the ninth easiest matchup versus position. But Jonathan Taylor, he is playing against the Jets. I love this. I love the volume, love the opportunity. I'm going to make sure, and I could be wrong, but I'm going to make sure he's in all of my DFS lineups this week. Love Jonathan Taylor. Love the upside. Love the opportunity. Love the talent. I love Jonathan Taylor. I don't know what to tell you. I love this guy. Make sure you try to plug him in. He's going to get the volume, and he's got a great matchup. Why wouldn't you? Last week, he had around 26 targets or 26 attempts. So he had to get the bugs out. He had to get the nerves out, right? Shake it out. I think he's going to be good uh, this week. He's going to be solid. 
Uh, Melvin Gordon, a pretty decent value play at $5,800 on DraftKings. Not bad. Pretty easy matchup. You may want to consider him. Other guys like Snell, Connor. Connor, you may want to consider. He's got a good matchup against Houston. I'm not really a Connor fan for fantasy. He had a good week last week. Good consideration. Uh, let's keep going here. Other guys you may want to consider. David Montgomery had a breakout game. 12th easiest matchup for his position. Not the easiest matchup. So it was kind of like a mid-range against Atlanta. But again, he had a breakout game last week. David Montgomery could have a good week this week. Again, coming off the momentum, getting into the groove. Now, he was in the groove. He had this amazing catch-and-run touchdown. And the thing about it is he came back, played a couple plays, went down with an injury, came back in the game, and kind of did this nosedive, kind of hurt his shoulder. He should be okay, though. I think he's good because he came back into the game. I love David Montgomery this week. I think he's going to ride off that momentum, okay? Dalvin Cook, mid-range matchup. A little expensive for me at $7,600. He hasn't had a phenomenal Start to the season. Uh, let's go to some tough, hard matchups here. When you're looking at starts and sits week three, you may want to be careful of Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. They actually are going to be tested against Washington's rush defense this week. Do not expect the same type of performance that you had out of, out of both of them last week. And always remember that Kareem Hunt will take half of whatever Nick Chubb is taking. Okay, just remember that. Zeke Elliott, sixth hardest matchup versus position against Seattle. Had a good couple two weeks. Safe and secure. He's going to get the volume. But just be aware of it, okay? And Leonard Fournette coming off a great week. Does have a tough matchup against Denver. Be cautious there. And all you guys thinking of starting Devontae Freeman, and I am in year long because I need the depth. Now, this is so crazy because if you look at how much depth I drafted at running back, I'm still hurting that running back in one league. Not hurting, but I got Jacobs, who's questionable. Saquon Barkley went down. Yes, I had Saquon and Jacobs in one league, believe it or not. Saquon went down. That's the importance of RB depth. So imagine if I had said, oh, I got Saquon Barkley. I don't need another running back. I wouldn't have never had Jacobs. So Jacobs is a tough cookie. Uh, he's a tough guy, man. And he is actually questionable with a hit, but I think he's going to play. Uh, who else do I got? In that? And I had to pick up Devontae Freeman. That's it. I mean, I have other guys. I have like Cam Akers, I think, or Joshua Kelly. I can't remember who I have. But either way, those are my studs with Saquon, Josh, Jacobs. Oh, Gurley's another guy I have in there. And Gurley hasn't been playing up to speed. So I got Gurley, Freeman, and Jacobs, but Jacobs questionable. So Gurley and Freeman are my options in that league. point I'm trying to make here is that even though I focus on going RB depth, like literally four, three to four running backs in the first three rounds, I'm still having an issue here since Saquon went down. So this is why I implore you guys, you got to go robust RB in your year-long leagues, okay? So let's move on here. Again, you got the feel here for running backs. Again, I like Jonathan Taylor. Joshua Kelly is a good value play, like I said. I mentioned a couple of guys. James Conner has a good matchup as well. Keep these guys on your radar. And Derrick Henry, I actually like him against Minnesota. I forgot to mention Derrick Henry here. Uh, I like him as well. $7,800, very expensive. You may want to blend him in. He's due for a big game and, a, and kind of a, he's been mediocre the past two weeks. He's been okay. He's been solid, but not the greatest, okay? Now let's go to wide receiver, some optimal plays. Amari Cooper has been phenomenal. 19 points was his kind of peak game. He does have a very good matchup. So does C.D. Lamb and, and Michael Gallup. But again, there's a three-headed monster there. Now, on, like, uh, like, Opposite of <laughs> opposite of Zeke Elliott, the Seattle Seahawks secondary, not as good as their rush defense. So I do like the matchup versus uh, position here for these guys. They are an optimal play. Cooper, Gallup, and CeeDee Lamb, it depends on who you want. And again, it's a dice roll. That's why I kind of stay away from these guys. I like the volume getters. Corey Davis, I think A.J. Brown is out. Corey Davis, an option this week. He had 13 points last week. Could be good value play. Uh, Allen Robinson as well. If he's going to have a breakout game, it's going to be this week. He has got the second easiest matchup for his position. Six points last week, but due for a breakout game uh, this week. Hopefully, hopefully. And again, he's going, he's not cheap. He's $6,200. So obviously DraftKings fan duels and the books know that Robinson it does have a good matchup. And he's still going to be expensive, even though his performance was not good the past couple games. Keep that on, on your radar there. Nelson Aguilar has a good game. Uh, good matchup as well. So does every receiver on the Vegas Raiders. But who is the primary receiver? Really suspect situation. I'm going to stay away from that because, I, like I said, prior to the season, I do not, do not trust Derek Carr with wide receivers at all. That's why I stay away from Ruggs and everyone like that. But Waller, who's a little banged up as well, is the primary target. But with Waller out, maybe a wide receiver gets that volume, but very suspect situation when it comes to Derek Carr. Uh, Metcalf, Lockett, both have good matchups. Who Who do you take? Again, it depends on who Russell Wilson goes to. I mean, Metcalf had a big play. Could be Metcalf, right? Who knows? Uh, McLaurin, love the matchup. Love the volume. Love the opportunity. Love him coming off a phenomenal game with 29 points. 
playing against the Browns this year, this week. It's going to be interesting to see how he does. I'm interested to see Terry McLaurin this week. Okay, someone to keep on your radar. Uh, I'm going to open this up here. I think I missed a couple people. Um, I also want to note, I missed a couple people here at quarterback because I only had the 13 games. Let me go back here. Uh, I know Minshew. Here's a perfect example. Let me go back here two seconds to quarterback. Minshew had a good matchup. Second easy matchup versus position. Didn't have a good game, right? He had a mediocre game, okay? So I need you to note, when you are looking at optimal plays, I want to make a disclaimer here. You got to be cautious because sometimes these optimal plays even though the optimal matchup, you got to look at the scale. That's why you got to anchor your team with a good quarterback. Going back to quarterback, I forgot to mention this. Lamar Jackson, I didn't mention this, has a pretty good matchup as well. Keep him on your radar. And Aaron Rodgers as well. And Ryan Tannehill, safe matchups. Running back, I think I missed a couple guys here. Because, again, I have a spreadsheet. I do all the research. And then what ends up happening is I, I miss a couple because I'm looking at the 13 games, not 16. I think running backs were good. I'm just covering my bases here. Yeah, I mean, Adrian Peterson's a value play. I may, may have missed out on him. And Alvin Kamara, also a good matchup this week. Okay, that's it. We're caught up. Um, okay, let's go back to wide receiver here. And again, with the wide receiver, this is where you want to take your chances. This is where you want to roll the dice. This is where, literally, you want to say, okay, I got a second or third wide receiver. I got to fit my budget. I can take some risks here, like a Russell Gage or someone like that. Someone that could go off and really, you know, kill it for you that week, right? Or even like a CD Lamb, he's like $5,400. He could be the primary receiver for this week on an easy matchup. So this is why DF is hard because you may not have started a CD Lamb and then he goes off for 30 points, then that person that started that lineup wins. So it can be frustrating. You got to get that perfect lineup so that all this information can be helpful to you, okay? We mentioned Allen Robinson could have a big boom. Okay, let's keep going here. Uh, we mentioned be careful with the wide receivers for the Raiders. We mentioned DK Metcalf. Now, Trey Quan Smith, he is interesting against Green Bay this week. 14 points last week. If Michael Thomas continue, continues to be out, which I think he is, could be a value play. Love McLaurin this week. Great value. And Chris Godwin, if he comes back, could be a value play. Not even a value, but $6,700, but could be a guy that could go off. But Mike Evans, we saw the chemistry with him and Brady last week. That can continue. Mike Evans is a safer play here, but you're paying $6,800 on DraftKings. Very expensive. 49ers receivers, I don't trust. Will Fuller. Now, this is very, very interesting. Our Will Fuller is a guy that's very hard to trust, and he's going against Pittsburgh secondary. Now, they have a better rush defense than they do uh, corners, but when you're looking at Will Fuller, now, he is sick. Here's, here's the perfect example of how someone can get screwed in, in, in uh, DFS. Now, Will Fuller had a good week one. He looked like the prime wide receiver one, 22 points. Week two, zero. Zero targets, zero receptions, zero points. Now, you look at a guy like Will Fuller who's coming off an ice-cold week. What if he comes out, has a big bomb, uh, pat catch and throw or passing catch from Watson and crushes it, right? You don't know. You really don't know. But Will Fuller, he's still $6,000 on DraftKings. But again, you, this is the thing, right? He's not really a value play, but he kind of is. Um, again, he could go off. And this is this is where you kind of got to take some chances on wide receiver. You can say, okay, well, Fuller had a bad week, but he looked good in week one. Maybe he booms this week, and he's got a relatively easy matchup, the 10th easiest first position against Pittsburgh secondary. You know, I'm personally probably not going to start him, but I'm just letting you know that's how crazy DFS is. One week they're on, one week they're off. Hopkins, very expensive, $7,900. He's got a relatively mid-range easy, you know, matchup versus the secondary against Detroit. You know, he's been consistent. You know, that's one thing I was wrong on with DeAndre Hopkins because, again, I didn't see him getting the volume. And he has been getting the volume, even with uh, Fitz there. And Kirk is going to be out this week. Christian Kirk's going to be out. So I imagine Hopkins getting a ton of volume this week, okay? Uh, let's go to some tough matchups here. Some guys that you may want to consider sitting and may want to be cautious about, okay? The guys from KC. Now, first and foremost, they've got the hardest matchup versus position against Baltimore. Again, that's probably why Fuller didn't see much volume. They were playing a tough defense. So Fuller was neutralized. Cooks was pretty much neutralized. So can they neutralize Nicole Hardman, Tyreek Hill, and Watkins and all those guys? I think Watkins is banged up as well. Let me take a look here. Watkins is banged up. I don't know what he's got here, but he does have... Uh, I got to take a look at that, and that's what I talk about Sunday. But I wouldn't be starting Watkins anyway. They do have a tough matchup. And again, I hate KC for wide receivers because it's very volatile, okay? Uh... Kenny Galladay, apparently he is going to be questionable. Now, Kenny Galladay does have a matchup versus a tough matchup versus Arizona secondary, but he has been practicing. So that looks promising. How is he going to do in game one? 
I don't know. It's going to be a very interesting matchup. But I think if he plays, he could have a good game. So be cautious with him. He does have a tough matchup. Diggs has got a tough matchup here. Now, this is an interesting matchup. you got Buffalo versus the Rams, both 2-0 and teams. Going to be very interesting to see how Diggs does in this matchup. Coming off an amazing game, but he's got it in tough this week. So a true test here for the Buffalo Bills, Stephon Diggs, and, of course, Josh Allen. Now, also, Matt Ryan, I told you, he has a tough matchup. So do his wide receivers against Chicago, right? So be cautious here, but you may want to consider, you may want to consider getting Calvin Ridley to start him if Julio's out, but it is a big risk. Again, Julio not there being a decoy. How does Calvin uh, Ridley look? Russell Gage could be a good play if Ridley sees any type of double coverage, okay? Other tough matchups, Marquise Brown hasn't really wowed us. Be cautious with him. And here's an interesting one who's the seventh hardest matchup for his position but could be a value play is K.J. Hamler. Had about nine, what do you have, seven points last week, but there is talk that he's going to get integrated more. That whole team is banged up. Judy's actually banged up this week but should play if he doesn't play. I mean, it could be trouble for this offense. Look for Fanton Hamler to get the ball. They do have a tough matchup against Tampa Bay. So something to watch here, KJ Hamler. Now, if Judy's out, I'd be, you know, I'd be really cautious with Hamler. But if Judy's in, Hamler could be a good play. And Robbie Anderson could be a good value play at fifty-two hundred dollars, but a tough matchup as well. Boomer busty type of guy. Okay. So those are your wide receivers. Let's go through a couple tight ends here for you, and uh, we'll wrap this up again. When you are playing, again, play with your limit, guys. Be cautious and try to take some chances and anchor your team with some ace guys. I like to anchor my team with solid running backs and solid quarterbacks and then take some risks at the wide receiver position. I like this guy a lot this week. Drew Sample, $3,500. I'm going to try to make sure he's in all my lineups here. Again, we saw Burrow going to his tight ends. Uzma's gone, and he's got the easiest matchup for his position at tight end. Drew Sample, love him. And actually, in one year-long league, I tried to get him, but he was actually gone. I put like $300 on him out of my FAAB budget. It's a $1,000 budget we have, and I had all my budget, and I literally threw $300, and somebody sniped him. I'm so upset about it because I wanted Sample as another tight end, okay? In that league, I think I got like Jared Cook or someone like that. All right, so I do like Sample a lot. I'm going to make sure he's in my lineups this week. He's going to get the volume. That's what we've seen. That's what I feel, right? Travis Kelsey, very expensive. You can see the difference in price on DraftKings. 7000 for Kelsey, 3500 for Drew Sample. Give me Drew Sample. I'm going to roll the dice, especially with Kelsey having an easy matchup versus position, but wide receivers having a tough matchup. It'll be interesting. Maybe Travis Kelsey gets fed more due to the, uh, the corners in Baltimore, right? They don't block tight ends as good as they do wide receivers. So maybe Kelsey goes off this week. You know, it could be interesting, but he does have an easy matchup. Higby coming off a great week, has a great matchup versus Buffalo. They don't play tight ends as much as, as again, similar situation with Kelsey where the tight end is kind of going to be an optimal play and a, an outlet for the quarterbacks, okay? So they might have good weeks, so keep them on your radar, okay? Again, we talked about uh, Hayden Hurst. I haven't talked about him, but we did talk about, who do we talk about? No Fant, possibly a good value play. They're banged up there. They're going to have to go to him. Hayden Hurst, kind of a mid-range mid range matchup. I like him, and I like Jordan Aikens as a value play because uh, he is a guy that Watson's going to. He's playing Pittsburgh tough matchup, but a value play. Guys, you may want to consider sitting. Be cautious with him. Evan Ingram, tough matchup. Darren Waller, tough matchup this week against New England. I mean, I don't know about him. He's the primary target there for Carr, but he's got a very tough matchup. Jordan Reed coming off a phenomenal week. He does have a tough matchup. Be cautious with him as well, okay? And Dalton Schultz coming off a great week. It was like his first week playing full out the way that he did. Uh, 23 points there. Dallas versus Seattle. He does have a tough matchup. Be cautious with him. And Hawkinson, who's been relatively a safe play, does have the eighth hardest matchup versus position against Arizona. Be aware and cautious of him, okay? Uh, that's pretty much it. Let's go over a couple defenses here for you because I know a lot of people start defenses. The defense that I really like this week, and uh, there's actually a couple I like, but the main one I like here, I got to mention it, is the Indianapolis Colts. I love them. I'm actually streaming them in year long. Hope they have a good week against the Jets. That's a defense for you. You could consider Arizona versus Detroit, but with Galladay back, that could be dangerous as well. And I do like the Titans versus Minnesota. They've got a pretty good matchup as well. But the Colts is kind of, I think, the lock of the week as my favorite defense this week against the Jets. Love this matchup. And they've been pretty good. They've been pretty safe, you know, considering as a defense. They've been pretty good. All right, guys, that's it. That is your DFS Saturday show. 
Good luck this week. Go out there, crush your DFS lineups. I know this helps. I know it will help you. And make sure you get your swag, guys. Get your t-shirts, fantasyfootballcounselor.com at thefantasyfootballcounselor.com. That is. Get your swag, get your t-shirts. And uh, thank you guys for being here. I'm looking forward to week three. Smash thumbs up, subscribe, and leave your starts and questions below. I appreciate you guys. Thanks for being here. I'm out.